The Commodore 64, now in a home family pack. A family pack containing the world's number one selling home computer. Let's go back to 1986, when one of the hardest games ever made was ported to the Commodore 64. Welcome to the world of Capcom's Ghost and Goblins. Ghosts and Goblins? What a combination! Satan has kidnapped Princess Prinprin and only the little bearded knight Arthur can save her. Starting in the graveyard in this side-scrolling monster of a game and confronted by zombies rising from their graves, you use your standard weapon of a lance to make your way through the oncoming hordes. In concept, the objective of Ghost and Goblins seems simple. Go right and get to the end of the level while defeating the enemies in the way. However, there are multiple reasons this game just becomes outright unbearable, most of which does not have anything to do with the level design itself. The main reason for this would have to do with the jumping controls. You see, Arthur does not have the ability to control himself in the air, which means you will often see him flying into enemies head on because you jumped before they decided to make an unpredictable movement. As you work your way through the game, you pick up power-ups, with the most valuable being armour. Perhaps one of the most iconic features of the game is how Arthur taking damage causes him to lose his armour and be stripped down to his underpants. This demonstrates that the game does not take itself too seriously, yet at the same time it is seriously brave to charge into unknown demonic territory in nothing but your underwear. But where's the dignity in running around in your underpants? Weapon upgrades are also available from axes and flame torches to throwing shields, which was a bit of a bizarre weapon. The creatures range from zombies and ogres to dragons and cyclops, and increase in numbers and difficulty as the landscapes change from graves to woodlands to towns to Skull Island and finally the tower you eventually have to ascend to the final level. At the end of each section, you have to deal with a boss, from a demon that can throw its own head, to twin augurs intent on reducing you to nothing but bones, to Satan himself. Some of you may be scratching your head thinking, I don't remember that, or I'm sure there was more. You would be right. Due to limitations of the Commodore 64, the game had reduced levels and was altered so it could handle the game. The Amiga version had the missing levels and the later consoles were arcade perfect. You are limited to two hits per life and you only get three lives, meaning when you die, you are put back to a reset point which can be over halfway back on the section you are on. As Capcom was obviously being run by some sort of sadist at the time, you also only had about 3 minutes per life. Chris Butler has made a marvellous job of converting the game, and Mark Cooksey's music was also superb and very atmospheric. The only point of criticism really is, as mentioned earlier, the overall length of the game. There are only 5 levels in total, which have been shortened quite a bit. With only three lives and no continue function, the game offers just as much motivation to get good as the original arcade classic. So, in winding down, if you want a game that will last you and bring back memories of standing in an arcade on your holiday seafront of choice, and give you a serious sense of accomplishment when completed. You will not go far wrong with Ghost and Goblins, one of the most influential platform games outside of Super Mario Bros. The original arcade game with all complete 8 levels was developed as a fan project for the Commodore 64 by the group Nostalgia in 2015. In my opinion, this remake is far better than the original made for the Commodore 64 by Elite. Mind you, you definitely need to take into consideration that almost 30 years separated the two versions, so this is to be expected. As a matter of fact, 
this remake is almost true to the arcade version. Having spent significant time playing the original, this appears to be an enormous improvement. Aside from the varied musical tracks for each level, it doesn't glitch out, flicker or cause errors in collision detection any time there's a significant amount of action on screen. If you really want a game that's as close to the arcade as you'll get on your trusty Commodore 64, then maybe consider seeking out this version of Ghost and Goblins. Oh, and if you like this sort of game, three years later, the successor, Ghouls and Ghosts, was converted for the C64. Unfortunately, it did not compare to its great forerunner, although it was more extensive than the original. But, you don't have to agree with me, of course. What did you think of this game? Were you a lover or a hater? Hit the like button and let me know in the comment section. A massive thank you for watching this video. And if you enjoy all things Commodore, then please don't forget to subscribe to the channel as we continue this retro journey to relive some nostalgic moments we shared throughout our gaming days. There's more to come and I hope to see you in the next video. Come and go. Until then, thanks again and bye for now.